Now this is truly my kind of day. It's here, and I'm loving every minute of it. I want to go fishing, because it takes my stress away. I want to go fishing, try and cast my blues away. I want to go fishing, I don't want to watch the clock. I want to go fishing, I don't ever want to stop. Look at this fog. You probably can't see up there in the boat ramp, but look, here's the St. John's River. Barely see the pelicans out there. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. Wintertime fishing is the best time fishing. Problem is, there's, I always say, the biggest problem is, Oh, it's the holidays. It's always something. Rosanna, Rosanna, Dana. It's always something. Well, guess what? If you want to just go in the middle of the summer when it's hot as holy hell, then that's your prerogative. But right now, this is Dave time. It's Jetty Wolf time. Oh, and by the way, it's also a Monday. And you see all the traffic here at the boat ramp? Look at all these boats. Oh my God, oh my God. The parking lot is like, it's like a Walmart parking lot on Black Friday. Oh my God. Well, I'll tell you this past weekend, I guarantee it was a whole nother ball game. I have Traveler Bob. He's been in many a video. I got Traveler Bob for the next two days. When me and the Traveler get together, and here he comes. I see him walking down the park lot. It's called Fun Time. All right, we're hooked up at the jetties. We don't know what it is. It was a micro, tiny little piece of shrimp on a bottom rig, just like this little piece of shrimp. It was a piece of shrimp that big, or no, it was half a shrimp this size. And Bob, I ha it took me underneath the boat, I just gave it to Bob. I was trying to catch whatever steel in our bait, which we thought were little croakers. Bob's under the weather, but this ought to make, uh, make up for it. <laughs> Who right. let them dogs out? Whoa, whoa. <laughs> Go ahead, Bob. Uh, 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 uh. All right, here we go, folks. Here we go. Okay, Bob. Let's see, when's the last time you caught one, Bob? Uh, with you in July. Yep. There you go. What'd you say? Uh, what? Oh, I, I'd say he's in the teens. In the teens. I'm not going to bother hanging in him or nothing. Teens. All right. Well, that was on a piece of shrimp, dead shrimp, about that big. Them dogs out. Bob's hooked up again, and guess what? With ha, a chunk of croaker. Whoa! Whoa! It's a blue marlin. All right, Bob got another one. It says heavy. Twenty-nine. That's all. Okay, you're gonna have to drift them, Bob. All right, you want fishing video? This is fishing video. Fishing for the big dogs. There we go. We like to get good and stinky out here. We're just gonna give them the old Turbomatic. <laughs> Be gone. 
You can do that in the winter time. You can do that in the winter time. You just can't do that in the summer. Man, when that water's hot, you gotta sit there and revive them and revive them. We're gonna go trout fishing, I think, now. Sounds like a deal. Okay, Bob's first trout. Oh, put them right up against there, Bob. He, uh, a little bit more, a little bit more my way. No. Ah, he's a shorty. But that was, that was literally Bob's first drift. Bob got a nice one. That's a nice one. Oh yeah, oh yeah, 18 and a half. All right, all right, that's what uh, Bob's put in the box already in 15 minutes. And then threw back a bunch. We're moving on to the next spot. I keep telling these guys, stop stealing my other boat. They're always taking my other boat out and they're gone for days and days and days. It's a drum, Bob got a drum. We're out here targeting Drum. And Bob got a drum. We wanted one bigger, but we'll take them. Boy, I'll tell you, I can't even hardly catch a croaker in old Bob over here. Pup, pup drums. If you can't catch them big, you better catch them. You better catch a bunch of them. <laughs> yeah. That's what Bob does. Ballroom dancing out here. Bob did it again. You know what I'm doing? I'm sucking wind. <laughs> Woo! Hey, hey. Dave gets one, finally. Yeah. I said a fool let the dogs out. It's a god dang giant red. Son of a god. Ah, that's the least thing we wanted to catch. This is okay for this morning. But now we're now we're out for food. I'd say he's he's a heavy teenager, if not in the 20s. Ah, oh, God, I was hoping he was a big old drum. 10, 15 pounds. Wah, wah, wah. Wah, wah, wah. I said, uh, who let them wah walls out? <laughs> who let them wah walls out? <laughs> Wait a second. There's guys out here in t shirts. Look at them. I got fleece on, this, Bob's got sweatshirt on. There's t-shirt wearers out here. They probably got a good HMO plan at work. Okay, Bob's hooked up. Out here at the jetties. Catching redfish. Problem is, they're all too big. I just had one that I'll put pictures up of, of an oversized redfish that just got ate by a shark and hope Bob's doesn't either. It was too much going on. I didn't have the camera out. Oh no, he didn't get eaten, did he? I couldn't stop mine. All I did was bring in a head, but Bob's got this one on now. Oh, he's not, he's not eating, is he? I don't think so. I just think this is such a puny rod and reel. No. Mm. Puny's my little Daiwa Ryoga, man. Oh. All right, what do we call that, Bob? Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> yeah, I'm fishing along like this, just jigging. I hook a nice redfish. Here it is. What is it? The 
18th, 19th? Bob, in November? Isn't it 19th? 20th. Oh, my God. The 20th of November, sitting here. It happened last year. Me and Aaron were out, and we I had a black drum completely eaten on the side of the boat by about a seven-foot shark, eight-foot shark. I mean, it was enormous. I don't know what the hell they are. Came out of the water, came out of the water, and just engulfed the entire black drum, turned and took off. Broke my line. But I'm jigging along just like I am right now with a jigging shrimp. I hook a nice redfish. I'm bringing him to the boat. And all of a sudden, he goes around the corner over here and takes off. But then I stopped him. He slowed down, and I could feel the shark shaking his head. The next thing you know, I come back reeling in just ahead. So that's what's going on at the jetties right now, besides yellowmouth trout. It was an absolute pitiful speckled trout bite today. So we're doing everything we can just to try to catch more keeper fish. Jig and shrimp combo meal. This is my third one today. Whee! About a hair of his chinny chin chin. He'll grow up to be 90 pounds someday. About yeah. a hair with, with look, at that, look at that hook. Isn't he cute? He's just a little cutie pie. Mr. Black Drum. Adios, amigo. We're just tearing up the Black Drum out here. Come on. Here we go. Ringtail Porgy. Wow. Is that a fatty or what? I got you right through the eyeball. Are you looking at me? Got to get out the glove, folks. Just grab it. Just grab it. Cousin to a sheep's head. He's got these little bastardy mat, little teeth. See them little teeth? Them little sheep's head teeth. Little porgy teeth. All right, want to keep them? If he's worth cleaning. Oh, he's worth cleaning. In a box with you. Fish on, fish on. Oh yeah, I only catch them one way. Either too big or too small. I never, ever, ever hardly get, I just told a guy on the phone today. Keep a redfish, what are you kidding? Yep, either too big or too small. All right, or no, this is another ringtail I think. Now, first little sheep set of the day, right up in the rocks, on a scramp, a little sheep head. I got him, I got him casting up into that wash right up in there. Oh, see, I was showing you that mouth of that ringtail porgy, and they got the same thing, why? They're all, they're all porgies. Not to be confused with pogies, but pog, porgies. God dang, getting out of the hook out of his mouth. There we go. You gotta pop it sometimes. All right. Another one in the box. I've gone over this before, but these are the jig heads that we use. I'll show them to you here. When you're doing a jig and shrimp combo meal. Just a stout eagle claw, 3 8 ounce maybe. Um... I was just telling Bob, back in the old days, before Braid, 
which this is a 20 pound liter tied to braid. We used to use eight pound mono, 10 pound mono. And when we did, we used super supple rods. I mean, more supple than the one I'm using now. And I mean, total buggy whips, like quarter to three eighths casting rods. And we used to use jig heads exactly like this, but had a fine wire hook. So, but with the advent of braid, you could beef up your hook. And then I've done this a million times before. What you got there, Bob? Hey, oh, a wonderful bluefish. The bluefish have infested the jetties. I take my jig. Here's my live shrimp. This is my bandage that was on my finger. I go from the first, second, third digit straight down. You got to make sure it's centered. You don't want to be off to one side or the other. Turn to take the shrimp, turn them around, and I say stick it in his walking legs. And then that's it. So when you hop him, he looks like he's kicking and he's going backwards, and they all want the meat. Every fish wants the meat, and now they gotta go through the hook twice to get it. Tan Roger. See that folks? That's a fisherman sandwich. Smoke kippered herrings and cheesy bread. Yeah. Fisherman's lunch comes in a can. Thank you.